Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be factoring a polynomial in two different ways. First method, so we're going to go ahead and distribute these terms and let's see what we get from here. So I'd like to keep the first one as is for now and then just multiply these together. So it's going to give me something like this, x plus y multiplied by xy plus xz plus yz plus z squared, and then I'm just going to add xyz. And then if I go ahead and distribute this, I should be getting something like x squared y plus x squared z plus xyz. And then I'm going to multiply x by z squared, so it's going to give me xz squared. And then I'll distribute the y. When I distribute the y and I'm trying to keep them in alphabetical order, so it's going to look like xy squared plus xyz plus y squared z, and then when I multiply y by z squared, finally it's going to be y z squared, and at the end I'm just going to add my term, the single x y z. Okay, so that's my expression, and notice that this expression has nine terms. So maybe we can just group these terms and factor that way, right? But what method would make the fact uh, grouping meaningful, right? So this is how we're, we can make it more meaningful. So we can just go ahead and take this and let me use this color. Put these together like that. For example, I want to keep x squared y with xy squared. And then of course we have the xyz three times. So we can basically use an xyz for each group. So this is going to be one of my groups. And the other group is going to look like this x squared z with xz squared. And then I'll be using xyz. And then my third group is going to be y squared z with y z squared. And then, of course, we have x, y, z at the end. OK, so we have a groups, uh, three groups of three. And let's go ahead and find a common factor for each one of them. And then we're going to try to put it together. So notice that in each group, we do have a common factor. For the first one, it will be x, y. So we can just write it as x, y times x plus y plus z. And then for the second group, it's going to be x times z. So it's x plus z plus, uh, not, I should be writing as y. So I guess to, to keep it more consistent, let me go ahead and do the following. If I take out an xz, it's going to be like x plus y plus uh, z. Okay, <laughs> I'm kind of messing up twice. And then for the last group, I can just take out a yz. And then I should be getting x plus y plus z. Now notice that here we do have x plus y plus z as a common factor, which means that we can basically just pull it out or just uh, use it as a common factor. So the result is going to be xy plus xz plus yz all multiplied by x plus y plus z. So this is going to be the factors of our original expression. Remember, our first expression wasn't factored. It was like a sum, but we factored it now, and these are the two factors. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Now, the second method is different, and it's kind of like Vieta style. What does Vieta style mean? We have a video on Vieta's formula, so I'm going to put the link down below in the comment section and maybe in the description as well. But Vieta's formulas are actually very important. And I don't want to get into the depth, but since we're just going to use this uh, briefly, so let me go ahead and uh, tell you this one. So this is going to be like Vieta's formulas or Vieta's formula because I'm only going to be using one of them. So let x plus y plus z equal b. Now you might be asking like why, what, what is, uh, why are we doing this? Because it makes sense. If you look at the Vieta's formulas, this is going to make more sense to you. Now, by this assumption, of course, I can assign any variable to any quantity here, but my goal is to use this efficiently in my expression and just make it factorable. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, substitute this into our expression and let's see what happens. So my original expression is obviously x plus y multiplied by x plus z multiplied by y plus z, and then we're just adding x, y, z to this, right? So by making this assumption, obviously, how am I going to express x plus y, right? I mean, if x plus y plus z is equal to b, well, you can just isolate x plus y from here. So x plus y is just going to be b minus z, as you can see, right? 
x plus z is going to be b minus y, and y plus z is going to be b minus x. What about x, y, z? We don't worry about it for now. At the end, it's going to simplify. Now, so we did, we did get another expression, but one of the things you can do is obviously distribute this and see what happens, okay? Let's go ahead and distribute this, and uh, if we go ahead and kind of follow the same format, just keep the b minus z alone for now, let's go ahead and distribute b squared minus bx minus by plus xy, and then I have the xyz, and let's go ahead and distribute everything. This should give me b cubed minus b squared x minus b squared y, and then if I distribute that, it's going to be plus bxy, and then I get b squared z plus bxz plus byz, and then finally I get minus xyz, and at the end I have plus xyz. Now notice that xyz cancels out, right? So I can just go ahead and cancel them out, and then the rest of the terms should be arranged in a certain format, like what? For example, I can just isolate the b cubed here, and then look at the terms that has b squared in them, right? So I can just factor out the b squared, and then that's going to give me x plus y plus z, so these three terms I'm talking about. And then the terms that have b in them basically can be written as b times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. All right. Now, what do we have? Well, we at the beginning, we, remember, we assumed that x plus y plus z is equal to b. So I can just go ahead and uh, back substitute that. So x plus y plus z is equal to b. So this gives me negative b squared times b, which is negative b cubed, which means that these two terms are going to cancel out, leaving us with b times the quantity x, y plus x, z plus y, z, right? Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So what I did was basically, let me just kind of reiterate or just repeat what I said. Our initial assumption was that x plus y plus z is equal to b, which I take from Vieta's formulas. Normally it's supposed to be negative b over a, but I didn't want to deal with the negative here, so I just kept it as a positive. Okay, so the sum of the x, y, z is equal to b, and by making that assumption, I ended up with this expression. And I do have something like b squared times x plus y plus z, but x plus y plus z is equal to b here, so I can just replace it with b, and that gives me b cubed minus b squared times b plus b times x, y plus x, z plus y, z. All right? So what does this give me? That b squared minus b is equal to b cubed, so I get b cubed minus b cubed, which is zero. Then I end up with b times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. But what is b, right? Well, b is equal to x plus y plus z. Remember, we kept using it, right? b is equal to x plus y plus z. So if you replace b here with x plus y plus z, then you should be getting x plus y plus z multiplied by the quantity xy plus xz plus yz, which gives us our original expression in factored form. And remember, our original expression was equal to x plus y times x plus z times y plus z plus xyz, which was kind of like a sum. And obviously, it's equal to this product which is in the factored form. I hope this makes sense and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.